Chinese military uniform colors of the Second Sino-Japanese War as well as World War II have always been a very confusing topic to look at, partly due to the scarcity of colored photos and film from that period, but also due to the sheer number of different uniform designs and colors that were in use during the war. This has caused many misconceptions to arise in recent years, and as such, I believe this topic deserves its own individual video. By using some rare colored photos, film, as well as period illustrations, we will take a look at some of the more commonly encountered uniform colors, try to clear up a few misconceptions, and take a look at the reason behind the diversity in uniform colors. According to the 1936 uniform regulations, the official uniform color of the Chinese army was known as grass yellow, a greenish yellow color. However, relatively little standardization in colors was achieved before the outbreak of the war with Japan. In the early war years, high-ranking officers and some of the most elite Central Army units, a term used to describe forces of the central Chinese government and loyal to Chiang Kai-shek alone, often wore higher quality uniforms with a more prominent dark yellow or brown shade. This color was often used for dress uniforms as well. Most Chinese soldiers would not have this luxury, however, and wore field uniforms with a more prominent green color during the summer season. This color was used by both the Central Army as well as some local or provincial forces. Not all units would receive uniforms of this color, however. For those that used the yellow-green uniform, the exact shade tended to vary quite a bit. As the war progressed, yellow-green uniforms would slowly be replaced with uniforms of other colors. Blue-gray colored uniforms were often encountered during the summer months as well. This color was very common in the pre-war years, with gray being the official uniform color up until the introduction of the 1936 uniform regulations. This color had yet to be fully phased out by the time the war started, and production of blue-gray uniforms would continue, with shades ranging from a dark blue to a light gray. A common misconception about this uniform color is that it was only used by local or provincial units. In reality, although it was certainly common in many provincial forces, units of the Central Army would also use this color. As the war progressed, khaki-colored uniforms started to show up in the Chinese Army as well. Some are actually yellow-green uniforms that had faded to a khaki color over time. However, uniforms were also manufactured in khaki as well, becoming more and more common as the war progressed. Khaki uniforms were also the standard for Chinese units that had undergone training in India. Contrary to popular belief that these units wore British-made uniforms, they were actually mainly supplied with local Indian-manufactured Airtex jackets as well as khaki drill shorts and trousers. Indian-manufactured uniforms had a number of distinct features that made them easy to distinguish from their British-made counterparts, and the vast majority of photos show Chinese troops wearing this style of uniform as opposed to British-made ones. Furthermore, these Chinese troops appear to have only been issued with the earlier khaki version of the uniform and not the later version dyed in jungle green. A less common uniform color would be black, which was mainly used on the ceremonial uniforms worn by officers. This was different from the dress uniforms and was reserved for only the most formal occasions. Even then, it was usually only worn by very high-ranking officers. Besides black, Gold and sometimes yellow was used on the uniform accessories and details as well. Certain militia and guerrilla units would also use black, including the guerrilla unit seen here operating out of Guangdong province. During the winter months, troops often switched to a thicker winter uniform. Instead of yellow-green, the most common color for winter uniforms was blue-gray, with many if not most of the Central Army units also wearing uniforms in this color during the winter. Like with the summer uniforms, shades varied drastically with colors ranging from a dark blue to a light gray. Not all winter uniforms were in a blue-gray color, however. Besides yellow-green, some units have been observed wearing winter uniforms which were khaki in color, as can be seen in the footage here. Furthermore, in the video, some of the soldiers are also wearing a white coat made from animal skin. Uniform colors for the Chinese Navy were relatively straightforward. Winter uniforms were in black or a very dark blue. Summer uniforms were white for the most part. However, I was unable to locate any color footage of the Navy's white summer uniform, and as such, I have to use some black and white footage here instead. Around the early 1940s, khaki uniforms were introduced for the Navy as well. 
This is contrary to the belief that the Chinese Navy only adopted khaki uniforms at the very end of the war or in the post-war era. However, khaki Navy uniforms remained very rare during the wartime years and were usually only seen being worn by high-ranking officers. Air Force uniform colors are perhaps the most complicated due to the sheer number of uniform variants, relative lack of standardization, as well as lack of documentation. In addition to the yellow-green colors similar to those worn by the Army, Air Force personnel have also been observed wearing khaki and white as well in the pre-war and early war years. However, photos of these uniforms tend to be scarce, and I was unable to locate any colored photos or footage showing these uniforms in use. Towards the late 1930s, however, after the start of the Second Sino-Japanese War, Chinese Air Force uniforms had started to shift towards the style used by the Army. Like their Army counterparts, officers tended to wear uniforms with a darker yellow or brown shade, which was also used during the winter. Yellow-green uniforms with a more prominent green shade, as well as khaki uniforms, were often seen as well, especially during the summer months. These two colors were also commonly used by enlisted personnel in the Air Force. Blue-gray uniforms were not usually used by the Air Force, however, although ground crew and mechanics have been observed wearing coveralls in this color. When in the air, pilots often wore flight suits over their usual uniforms. Flight suit designs and colors also varied quite a bit, with colors ranging from khaki to different shades of green, as well as brown. Some pilots can also be seen wearing brown leather flight jackets as well. Now that the different uniform colors have been established, it's time to take a look at some of the reasons behind this diversity in color. In 1936, new uniform regulations were introduced for the Chinese army, and at the start of the Second Sino-Japanese War, the process of switching to new uniforms had not yet been completed. Like with the army, the Chinese Air Force had also introduced new uniform designs in the mid-1930s. After the start of the conflict, acquiring the required fabrics and dyes as well as supplying them to all the different units became a problem. As such, many units would turn to local manufacturers to produce their uniforms, many of which did not conform to the new regulations. Uniforms produced by these different manufacturers would often have slightly different shades due to using different types of fabrics or different dye mixtures. The source of these fabrics and dyes was a contributing factor as well, with many being produced domestically, but others being imported from other countries. For certain provincial forces as well as those operating behind enemy lines, these materials may have been rather scarce, forcing them to use whatever they had available, regardless of color. This is noted in a booklet produced by the U.S. Office of War Information that looked at Chinese Communist guerrilla forces. In it, it was stated that their uniform colors often varied and could be in colors such as green, yellow, or gray. This is contrary to the common misconception that these forces only wore blue or gray uniforms. Fading was another factor that contributed to the diversity in uniform colors. As the dyes used to stain the fabrics were sometimes of rather low quality, they tended to get washed out quite easily, and it was not uncommon to see soldiers from within the same unit wearing uniforms that exhibit various degrees of fading. Another reason for the lack of uniformity in colors was the fact that officers were able to acquire privately purchased uniforms. As uniform tailors often didn't follow a strict guideline, the colors of privately purchased uniforms tended to differ between makers. This is demonstrated in the footage here showing a group of officers from a local unit in Guangxi province where a wide range of uniform colors can be observed. And with that, we will wrap up the brief video looking at the uniform colors of the Chinese Army, Navy, and Air Force. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. And until next time, thank you for watching.